1MDB has sparked embezzlement and money laundering investigations across One of the biggest corruption countries. scandals the world has ever seen. What may be the biggest financial scam in the history. Of corrupt 1MDB officials treated this public trust as a personal bank account. Follow us as we bring you into the courtroom where the biggest financial scandal in Malaysian history is being heard. By the Malaysian Insight, this is the Najib Razak 1MDB trial, and I'm Patrick Teo. Azmi Tahir, the former 1MDB chief financial officer, told the court today that he had not carried out any due diligence on entities that received monies from 1MDB. He said he did not investigate the companies because there was no instruction from the top. <laughs> It's Monday, April 18th, and Najib's 1MDB trial resumed at the Kuala Lumpur High Court this morning. Najib is standing trial for graft involving 2.28 billion ringgit in 1MDB funds. He faces 25 charges, 4 for abuse of power and 21 for money laundering for offences committed between 2011 and 2013. Today, when defence lawyer Wan Aizuddin Wan Muhammad asked Azmi if he had taken any self-initiative to investigate the authenticity of the fake ABBA, or ABBA Investments PJS Limited, the witness said he did not. I did not proceed with any investigation because I was not instructed by anyone, not even the board. Two shell companies set up by ABBA Investments PJS Limited, which were incorporated in the British Virgin Islands, BVI, and the Seychelles, are beneficiaries of millions of dollars transferred out of 1MDB in 2014. ABBA BVI received 175 million US dollars, while 681 million US dollars was channeled to ABBA Seychelles in September 2014. The fund originated from a 975 million US dollar loan obtained by 1MDB from Deutsche Bank. Citing the difference in the address provided in documents between the fake ABBA and the real ABBA, one Zainuddin asked if Azmi, who was tasked to handle 1MDB's financial affairs, had spotted the contrast between them. No one else, too, were able to identify the difference, Azmi retorted. No one brought it up as well. We had lawyers, bankers, advisors. We had about 30 to 40 eyes looking at the documents, but no one highlighted the difference, Azmi clarified further. The real ABBA, or ABBA Investments PJS, without the limited, is a subsidiary of international petroleum international company, IPIC. One Aizuddin then proceeded to blame Azmi for his failure to conduct proper due diligence. To that, Azmi explained that his task was only to disburse funds as instructed by the board. Azmi held the position of CFO from June 2012 to December 2017. He told the court he only came to know about the fake ABBA in 2015 when he was informed by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission during investigation. Moving on to another area, one Aizuddin questioned Azmi whether he was acting on Terence Gay's instructions. Gay was a close associate of businessman Lo Teg Jo. Azmi again repeated that he was just following orders from the top. I believe that the instructions came from Najib through Jo Lo, he said. Azmi said only on paper it looked like Gay was his deputy, but claimed he had more information on certain matters. Azmi also reiterated that Joe Lowe encouraged working in silo, which was followed by the senior management and board members, including Gay. To wrap up the day, Najib's lawyer, Madia Mohammad Siraj Kumar, accused Azmi of working in cahoots with Joe Lowe and Gay to misappropriate millions from 1MDB. The same question was repeated by the defence lawyer several times, to which Azmi denied vehemently. With that, the proceeding ended for the day. The trial will continue on Wednesday. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by the Malaysian Insight. It was written by Ravin Palanisamy, and I'm Patrick Teo. Mm-hmm.